the weekend. Oh my gosh. So um, I am almost done with, what is it called? Hmm. Maps of our spectacular bodies or something like that. And it is like seriously, definitely going to be on my top 10 of the year and probably towards the top. Um, so I'm going to try and finish that. And then I have yoga in the stacks, which is basically yoga at the library tonight. So that will be fun and like a cozy way to start the weekend. This is like perfect timing. I literally just finished and I am off to yoga at the library. So we need to talk about this and I don't know if we're going to talk about it after yoga tonight or just wait till tomorrow because this is the most beautiful book I think I have ever read in my entire life. Um, and it's so artistic and like there's so many layers to why this book is so beautiful. Uh, so I definitely need to think more about it before I talk about it, but I will soon because holy shit, I love this book so much. Hey everyone, I got back from yoga and we need to talk about this tonight. The lighting's bad, nobody cares because I just wanna talk about this. Um, so this is Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies by Maddie Mortimer and this is the book that I finished today. So how did I hear about it? Um, it was long listed for the booker, but believe it or not, I do not give a crap about literary prizes. So I actually um, heard about this book from my friend Sarah, her channel is Your True Shelf. And um, basically, you know, we have friends on Goodreads and Storygraph. I don't use Goodreads anymore, so I use Storygraph. And from time to time, I will go on and look on my friends' accounts and just like scroll down and see like, what have they read recently that they have given to five stars too. And I have not done this uh, in a really, really, really long time with Sarah, like months and months and months. And she had just finished this book and gave it five stars. And once I read the premise of this, I realized that this is the perfect book at the perfect time for me. And I'll talk more about that later. A bunch of notes on my computer um, that I want to get through. So if I'm looking down, that's why. But anyway, uh, this basically tells the story of Leah, um, who is diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer. Uh, she's had breast cancer before and it has now spread to her liver. She lives um, e in London or near London. She lives in the UK with her husband, Harry, and their daughter, Iris, who I believe is 12 at the start of the story. She's kind of like a preteen early teen sort of a uh, situation. <laughs> I don't remember exactly how old she is, but I'm pretty sure she's 12. Um, and um, her, Leah's job is a writer. So that is in the story a lot because one of the things that um, she does is she basically writes these books that are about language. And um, so there's lots of vocabulary words being like, really drawn it's there's a drawn attention to these various words in the story and that's a whole part of the plot and of the connection between her and her daughter and that's kind of the second thing that's going on in this book um is that it is not only a story of leah and her slow journey towards death like the process of dying um but it's also a story of mother-daughter relationships so her relationship with her mother Anne and also her relationship with her daughter Iris that is a huge part of this book um and then as I said it is this journey towards death that's not a spoiler that she's gonna die at the end everyone knows that um but the way it is done is just very free-flowing and um just very almost dreamlike in the way that your thoughts are going all sorts of different places when you know that you are dying or I assume that is where they go. And so um, you are in the present day with her as she is going um, through this metastatic breast cancer journey, but you also travel with her through the past as a child and what her relationship with her mom was like and her dad and what her childhood was like in general. Um, you travel with her back into the past so she kind of remembers previous lovers and just like, well, one in particular, but like just like past relationships and kind of how she became the woman that she is today. And then, um, yeah, you're just with her in the present day as well. Um, the other thing that I want to say about this is mainly you are mostly focused on Leah's perspective 
but also you get into Iris's head quite a bit, her daughter. So that's why it's really a mother-daughter story because while you pop around to a lot of different characters, um, those are the two whose like inner thoughts you hear the most. However, the really, really, really cool part about this book is that there's also another character. What um, And whenever we get to them, the print is like bold, the font is bold. And at the beginning of the story, it appears that this second narrator is cancer itself. It's like a personified cancer. And the author actually gave away a spoiler in one interview about who actually this voice is. And she didn't really think it was a spoiler. I personally do. So I'm not going to say it ends up not 100% being cancer. There's a lot more to it, a lot more nuance. And I think that that is something you discover as the book goes on about who this voice is and what the purpose of this voice is and where this voice is coming from. And I just think that to discover that on your own is so absolutely beautiful and so like just profound and I don't want to ruin it for you. So yeah, that's that. Another thing I loved about this book was how like innovative and artistic it was. Um, so you have, so you have like the print book, right? Um, and it is in all different kinds of fonts. So you have like your regular fonts. Um, I believe that Maddie Mortimer has a background in poetry. So this is very, very poetic. But then you also have like right here, this is like part of her mom's book leah's book um you also have a lot of like journal kind of writing like little bits of handwriting and there's more journaling in here i just am just like randomly flipping pages um you have like more poetry where it's actually like in a different shape and very free-flowing um or structured in a way that's very purposeful for the type of poetry it is um yeah just like to physically have this in front of you this is like a work of art let alone the language and the writing and the way it was put together and like just oh my gosh it's insane um but i also listened to the audio and the audio is amazing too because as i said cancer or what you think is cancer has a voice in the story and so the tor the the the, the story is told in two voices you have the main narrator who does leah and you know most of the other characters um but then you also have this second voice that is more ominous and um just like angry and dark and that is played by a different narrator or whatever voice actor um so it's really really interesting to listen to it it's beautifully done and i highly recommend listening to it um which leads me to how to read it <sighs> i don't think i've ever read a book that i would recommend this to but do you remember when you were little if you're like my age anyway and you would like get a book from the library or whatever. And it was like a book with a cassette tape. And then you would like put the cassette tape in your player and you would have the book in front of you. And then when it was time to turn the page, it would like beep at you and you would turn the page. That is how this book needs to be read. So if you listen only to the audio, then you miss just all the beautiful ways that text and art is used in this book. And if you only read it, I think that you miss some of the nuance, or I know for me, I would be personally skipping over some of the poems and things, like that's just how I roll. Um, and I think that the voices added a lot to this that would be missed if you only read it in the book book. So I really think that you need to like, go back to your childhood, listen to it and follow along in the book at the same time or listen and then like from time to time pick up the book and that's kind of what I did I mostly listened to it but from time to time I would follow along in the book just because I don't want to miss anything super beautiful in the book itself who is it written by that's another thing that I think adds a lot of beauty to this so it was written by Maddie Mortimer um she was only I think 26 when this was published um, so super, super young. This is her first novel, which is why it's so autobiographical, which I will talk about in a second, but just like 
the the depth and layers that this book has there's like no way that it is a debut novel i am so shocked but like i said it is autobiographical which is common for first time novelists so when she was 14 her mom died of metastatic breast cancer as well and she even talked about in an interview that the last like 30 pages or so um were pages that were not touched by editors because they were so deeply emotional for her to write that she just kind of like shut herself in and just like wrote and like sobbed and the 30 or so pages she said um that told of Leah's death those were almost exactly about like how her mom died and stuff like that so this is like I said autobiographical but it's you know fiction obviously but those last 30 pages are very very close to the truth so I guess what I thought about this um I mentioned it in another video but I didn't want to make a big deal of it so I kind of mentioned it way at the end that my mom right now has metastatic breast cancer so I deeply believe in mood reading and I deeply believe that the right books will come to you at the right time. And so I find it really interesting that I chose that day a few days ago to suddenly decide to stalk Sarah's <laughs> uh, story graph to see what she had read recently um, and that this book was on there because I just feel like it came to me at the perfect time. Um, sometimes when you're going through something you don't want to read or watch movies or whatever about the experience you're going through and other times it makes you feel seen and it makes you feel hard and it almost is cathartic to read or watch videos on something similar to what you're going through and this was the case for me like I needed to read this and I read it at the perfect moment and I will read read I will reread this again um, for sure, because I think there's other elements in this that I could pick up on in a reread. Um, because as I said, there's so many layers to this story. And then also like as my connection to my mom changes and we go through this experience side by side, I guess, like obviously I'm not the one having cancer, but I'm witnessing it in the same way. Well, in a similar way to Leah or sorry, <laughs> Maddie, um, yeah, I just think it's gonna, this book is gonna stick with me and have a lot of meaning for the rest of my life. Um, so with that being said, I feel it's very real. So um, my mom and I have the best, best relationship. Um, we, I love hanging out with her. I love traveling with her. Um, but at the same time, like, we're both real people. And so like, things are not like, rainbows and butterflies all the time right like we do have conversations where we disagree or we get mad at each other or whatever and what I loved about this book was how like prickly Iris was and how it showed that just because someone in your life has cancer or is dying doesn't mean you're all of a sudden gonna like put them in this beautiful bubble and just like treat them some kind of different way like my mom has metastatic breast cancer. It is most likely in her lungs. Uh, she has a lung biopsy on Monday that I'm taking the day off of work for um, to take her to. But she's still my mom. She's still the same person she was before we knew that she had cancer in her body. And I still treat her the same. And that means that sometimes I get real mad at her, right? And I just loved how real this was and how Iris was not gonna start treating her mom some kind of way just because she had cancer. The other thing is I felt like, especially with the voice of the extra narrator, I felt it showed how pervasive cancer is. Like right now, literally, cancer is on my mind all the time and I know that that's probably not healthy and I am on the waiting list for a therapist just so I can kind of proactively deal with this situation that could last like up to 10 years or so like I don't know how long this journey is going to take for my mom but um yeah I just feel like that cancer is pervasive in my thoughts right now and when I talk to my mom we talk about normal stuff but then it keeps coming up with her too like we're both bringing it up quite often and um I thought the voice just kind of interrupting every few sections or so was really real so 
um, obviously written by someone that has gone through this. And I think that for me, another thing that I will say, which is less connected to the book, but my mom had breast cancer 17 years ago. I was just finishing up my sophomore year of college and the way I'm responding to her cancer diagnosis now is so different from when I was a sophomore um, in college. And so like I connect to Maddie in some ways, but her experience was drastically different because she was a teenager, a very young teenager when her mom passed away. Um, and I have lived a whole beautiful life with my mom and she's not leaving anytime soon. She has a really good prognosis. Um, but yeah, I just noticed that for myself, my experience of dealing with it when I was a sophomore um, in college was much more childlike, whereas now I'm more action oriented and focused on like, how can I take care of my mom? How can I be like, a, it's a more of like a caregiver mindset. And that's also not healthy <laughs> um, because I realized that I'm focused so much on doing, doing, doing that I'm not slowing down to think about how does this make me feel? How is this showing up in my body physically? all that sort of stuff, but that's more about me and less about the book. Um, in addition, I thought this book was just absolutely beautiful, super creative. Um, I like cannot say anything like high. I have like the highest thoughts about this book. It is definitely going to be one of my top 10 of the year and definitely towards the top. Like, oh my gosh, guys, I love this book so much. It is so meaningful to me. It'll definitely be a reread, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't know what else to say. Please let me know if you have read it because I'm obsessed. Up, up, up in a painted cup, I would pour my love from a cloud above. So bright I can see the lights taking you up and above the blue sky Tastes good to be drinking all of the honey sweet brew of ours Up up in a painted cup, right in the sky like a firefly Like a firefly I believe to believe is to feel the fire Okay, so I have an idea and it is partially based on the people that are on my TV. Um, this is called the Read What You Own Challenge and this is a legit challenge that has a lot of freedom to do it however you want. The idea is that you read 100 books before buying any new ones, but you don't have to read 100. You can like participate by just reading five books that you own before buying new ones or whatever. Your start date can be whatever you want it to be. Your end date can be whatever you want it to be. Like basically this is just the idea that these people uh, created and I will link them below and you participate how you want to participate. So how do I want to participate? Okay. Here's what I found. Here is my idea. It is 2023 and obviously we're coming up on the end of the year. I would love to be able to read 23 books from my own collection that I have not read yet um, or that are rereads because remember December is coming up. Um, but basically 23 books that I own before January 1st. And then on January 1st, I will start a 2024 version, which is where I will read 24 books I own before I buy any new ones. And I think this would be really, really cool to start every single year um, by doing like 24 books, 25 books, etc., cetera, uh, before buying new ones. So that's the plan. Let me know if you are participating. I am super curious. I just think it's a really fun idea um, because we go on like book buying bans all the time, but this is a way to do it and make it fun and make it into a challenge. Okay, you guys, so it is finally time <laughs> when I can read uh, this afternoon. And basically, I have a book that I'm reading because I am deeply in the mood for literary fiction, big feelings, all that sort of stuff. And then I also have a book I'm supposed to start uh, because I'm reading it with Brie, but I haven't started it yet. And I know that she started it days ago, so I need to do that as well. But a book came in the mail. So I'm going to avoid both those things and read this. This is Undoctored by Adam Kay. And I am beyond obsessed with his first book. Um, this is going to hurt 
Then he wrote a holiday version, um, which is basically his time working in hospital, um, like around like the holidays. And that one was okay too. Like it definitely had funny scenes in it, but like for the most part, his first book was the best. And so I'm slightly nervous to read this because I feel like he just like did everything amazing in his first book. And then since then, I mean, he was only a doctor for so long, like how much is there to write about? Um, but at the same time, obviously I purchased it because I was like, oh my gosh, Adam K wrote another book. I am all over this. He also wrote a children's book, but I don't own that. And I've heard it's not very good. I'm not really sure. Anyway, um, I'm a huge fan of Adam K. So I'm going to read this and like a band will put off my other books for now. Okay, I mean, it does start off quite good with just, like, his um, dedication. He dedicated it to this guy named Mike and for somebody else who might be his grandma or something like that. And then, and to, and to my friends and family who will once again learn quite major things about me by reading them in a book. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm, like, not even on the first page, but um, he does this thing all the time where... You know, obviously, um, he's not a doctor anymore. He's a comedian. But, like, as a doctor, obviously, everything is confidential. And so he and all doctors always change the names of their patients and change, like, details that might just, like, be too obvious or whatever. And um, so, anyway, he will, like, create basically the names based on a certain theme in his books because, obviously, he needs to make them all up. So in this one, he says, colleagues and friends have been anonymized by in this book by replacing their names with members of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, an organization which I'm pretty sure has no lawyers. Anonymizing my family would have been harder, so I haven't bothered. <laughs> okay, hi, it's me again. Um, and just so you know, if you haven't read any Adam K, which is a problem and you need to change that, I will just uh, give you a taste of the first paragraph of this book because... I'm already in love with it. Okay, anyway. It's called Flashback, Formaldehyde. You know what it's like when you're cutting into a dead body? No, of course you don't. It's perverse and, hor and horrific thing that only should ever be experienced by coroners and gangland criminals. Unless, of course, you're one of the 9,000 18-year-olds who sign up to medical school in the UK every year. For them, it's just what you do every Friday morning. Do you mind if I join you? I stuttered for, to my cadaver mates as if I was making up a four for bridge rather than getting ready to carve up someone's granddad like a Christmas turkey. I would just like to formally take back anything I ever said about Adam K possibly not having more stories because I'm dying laughing. Okay guys, I need to stop reading you bits from this book because you should just read it yourself, but um, one more, one more. When somebody else is paying, you can find yourself in places you've never dreamed of which is how I ended up staying at the Trump International Hotel in Las Vegas. Writing those words now, it's basically like announcing that I spent a fortnight in the Hitler Hilton. But back then, Trump was just a slightly creepy reality star slash business bastard. <laughs> Thank you.
close your eyes Get some rest I'm by your side Lay your head on my chest Okay, I just got back um, from like my mom's house and all that stuff and I'm freezing so I still have my fleece on and I have the heat turned on. I basically am going to read in the bath for a bit because I just need to warm up and I'm going to try and finish the hollow places tonight. But I will just talk about this in another vlog um, just because I haven't discussed it with Brie yet and also I don't know I just feel like it doesn't belong in this vlog besides that I did read about half of it at the hospital today and so far I like it and I would give it like four stars at this point but yeah I want to finish it tonight but I did quickly want to touch base about Adam Kay's book because I realized that like I talked about it along the way but I never really gave like a final summary and I don't honestly have too much else to say beyond what I put on Instagram which is basically that I'm beyond obsessed with that book and um I think I might like it better than this is going to hurt like I don't know that's saying a lot but I really really liked it definitely five stars um I guess the only thing that I want to comment on well there's a couple things first of all is just like his other book um this is going to hurt and I can't remember if there was much in the holiday one but like this is like written by a doctor and so obviously they don't just see pleasant things all day like he is writing this in a hilarious way like there's so much that's funny in there but there's so much that's serious too so I guess I would just check out trigger warnings and stuff like that before you read it um just to make sure that you are prepared and that you can handle it with whatever place you're in at this point in time um but the other thing <clears throat> is so I talked about this before and this is just going to be like a brief little bit but <coughs> um I love my doctors I love my health care I feel like I personally have things really good but that and if you don't know i live in america i'm sure you probably know that because probably the people that are watching this already know me but um i personally have really good health insurance and i am at this moment in time really well taken care of but in america everything is so based on money even medicine and stuff that is like a person's right to be alive um anyway and um so I think that Adam K like brought that up a couple times about how America sucks in that way. And I totally agree with him because like if I were ever to become disabled or lose my job for whatever reason or whatever, like there goes my health insurance and um, 
yeah, it's like things are good until they're not and then you're screwed <laughs> basically in America. And so um, I thought it was interesting there were a couple of times when he was in America and he had some sort of a situation where he needed to go to the hospital in America. And yes, I know, yes, I know, you should have traveler's insurance, but like you still should also be able to go to the hospital in America if you have a problem and not basically be destitute as a result of that. And yeah, there was one time when he like basically decided not to go to the hospital when he should have gone to the hospital and the reason for him not going to the hospital is because in his words which of course he tries to make it funny but it's actually like true he couldn't afford half a second in an american hospital and like yeah you're right like i don't care how rich you are you couldn't right that's true that's true and then um yeah he like got back to um england and he like went to the doctor like the day he got back and um, the doctor was like, oh, like, how long has this problem been going on? And he was like, oh, you know, a few days. And then his partner, who, by the way, Adam K is gay. And I thought he was in the first book. But I realized he never used pronouns for his partner. So in this book, he says he's gay. Anyway, um, his partner is like, um... <laughs> It hasn't been a few days it's been a fortnight and then his doctor like freaks out on him because like honey like you should have gone to the doctor and then like adam k who you know was a doctor um thinks that like oh he can just like i forgot what he oh he wanted to go to physio or something and like that would like solve the problem and <laughs> then he joked about basically the doctor just like looked at him like are you dumb and like basically like trying to like cure some huge medical uh situation with like a protein shake or, <laughs> or some essential oils or something like anyway so yeah i feel that america was called out a number of times in this book and rightfully so i'm just saying just saying um but yeah i i feel like I read a lot of well I've only read two books I think in this vlog but I feel like I'm in a really good reading place where I am reading stuff that matches my interests right now and that's getting me in a better mood and like yeah just cheering me up and then uh this T. King Fisher book like always it's so horrific and so cozy at the same time I don't understand um yeah I am liking uh, The House with Good Bones much better than this, but this one is still pretty good. And I'm reading it with Brie, which I already said, but I will link her channel below. So that's really all I have to say for now. Tomorrow is Halloween. I am being a Barbie and I will catch up with you guys soon. Thank you for watching. If you made it to the end, you're basically the most amazing human being in the history of the world. And I will talk to you later. Bye.